Hey everybody, it's Mark Cabana here again, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the newly added uh, proxy support feature for Places Scout. Um, so we're going to go over that as well as how to uh, configure the proxies for uh, optimal data gathering for uh, business owner name data from Manta.com. So um, if you want to get this data, it is very important that you use proxies and uh, know how to use them correctly uh, so that you get the maximum amount of results possible given the uh, number of proxies you have. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, so if you want to gather business owner name data from Manta.com, and the way you typically do that is by clicking on the Select Additional Data to Gather button and choosing the uh, Gather Business Owner Name option, uh, then it's very important that you have enough uh, anonymous and fast proxies to use to gather this data. And that's what I'm going to cover in this video is how to configure the proxies and ensure that they're uh, set up right so that you're able to get this data. Um, so we're going to head on over to the Settings tab here, and in the Settings tab, you're going to see a new button here that says Proxy Settings. So the first thing to do is to click this button, and it's going to bring up the Proxy Manager. What the Proxy Manager does is it allows you to add proxies for use with data gathering. It allows you to check these proxies to see how fast they are and to see if they can be used in Places Scout. And it also allows you to configure the various settings that are available for uh, proxies. Um, so the easiest way to get started with this is uh, under the Add Proxies tab here, um, there's an Enter Proxies to Add box, and we're going to paste a list of proxies that I've uh, gathered using a proxy program. Um, by the way, if you need a, a program that uh, can find good proxies, I recommend a Proxy Goblin. Um, I have a link here. You can click on it, and it'll open it up in your browser. Uh, just something someone recommended to me on uh, Warrior Forum, and it uh, seems to work well. Um, so that's where I got these proxies from and uh, once I paste them into the enter proxies to add box uh, the next thing to do is to click add to proxy list after you do that the proxies you uh, pasted will be added into the grid view to the right here um, you'll see the total number of proxies there's 22 total uh, there's none active now because we haven't checked them yet uh, so the next thing to do is to actually check these proxies um, and the way you do that is by clicking the check proxies slash refresh latencies button so I'm gonna go ahead and check this and it's gonna go and uh, check these proxies and see which ones uh, we can use in place of scout uh, so we'll give it a second here and it uh, should be done uh, fairly shortly Okay, so it's done checking the proxies now, and uh, after it checks the proxies, uh, you're going to see the grid view is now populated with some data for each proxy. Uh, the first thing you'll see is a latency column, and uh, this time you see here is basically the... Uh, the amount of time it takes to get Google's home page. Um, instead of doing a ping on the proxy, I actually try to get Google's home page. Um, that way we see how long that takes. We get some real data and uh, we measure that time. And uh, we can also measure some other things by doing that. Um, so the next column over is uh, requires auth, which is uh, short for uh, requires authentication. Uh, what this column denotes is whether or not the proxy requires a login. Um, and if it does, uh, you cannot use it in place of Scout. So if you see yes here, uh, this will be red. Um, you cannot use that proxy within place of Scout. So uh, do not uh, set those as active. Um, the next one is uh, redirected. Uh, what that means is whether or not the uh, request for Google's home page was redirected to another page. Um, if it is redirected, uh, again, you will not be able to use this proxy in place of Scout because uh, we don't know what's going on with this uh, proxy, whether or not it's going to give us the right uh, data or not. Um, so if either of those two come back, yes, uh, do not use that proxy. And uh, the way you configure what proxies to use is the next column over, which is is active. Um, is active basically sets whether or not we're going to use this proxy for data gathering within place of Scout. Um, so if that's checked, uh, it will be used. Um, now you'll see that only some of these were checked and those are affected by the uh, settings. So I'm going to go over that one second. Uh, I want to describe one more setting, which is uh, the is master. Um, basically, the way the data gathering works in Place of Scout is that it does not use proxies uh, by default for any Google.com request. And it just really doesn't need to with the new code. Uh, you don't really get many CAPTCHAs, so um, it doesn't by default use a proxy for, uh, for gathering Google.com data. Now, if you want to use a proxy for getting Google data, uh, you can set a single master proxy. Um, so if I check this uh, proxy as the master, what that means is that this proxy will be used for all Google.com requests. Um, so that's what is master means, is that we'll use this proxy for Google requests. Um, is active is a little bit different in that it means that we'll use it to gather Manta.com data. 
And I'm just going to go ahead and uncheck that is master flag because I don't really like to use proxies when gathering Google data. I'd rather the request come from my IP address. That way I know it's, uh, I'm going to see the same data as what I'd see in the browser. Um, so uh, next I'd like to go over the proxy settings. Uh, so we're going to head to the proxy settings tab. And here you'll see various settings that configure uh, different aspects of how proxies are used and checked within Places Scout. Um, so this first setting here is uh, show proxy debug window. Um, if this is checked, uh, when you go to gather manta.com data, if you have that uh, uh, gather business owner name data option checked in the uh, find local client section, uh, you're going to get a window that appears that's going to show you how many uh, active proxies you have, how many are banned, and it's just going to give you some uh, debug information uh, with uh, in regards to how much data it's gathered, what it's currently gathering, uh, when the proxies get banned. Um, so that's nice to see uh, exactly what's going on when you do get this data. Um, so that, that's what that option does. I'll, I'll show you that window whenever we actually go to gather the data. Um, the next is check proxies on program startup. Uh, if this is checked, it's going to uh, go ahead and do the check proxies, what we just did a minute ago. Uh, it's going to do that automatically every time you start the program. Um, so if you want to check uh, your proxies, which I actually recommend doing this, that way you know which ones are available and which ones aren't. Uh, every time you start Places Scout, uh, keep this option checked. Um, next, you're going to see check proxies in parallel. Um, if this option is checked, it's going to check all your proxies uh, in parallel instead of one by one. So this will dramatically speed up uh, w uh, the process of checking the proxies. Um, and there's a max simultaneous checks option here. Uh, this allows you to configure how many uh, simultaneous proxy checks can go on at once. Um, so I like to keep it at 5. Uh, you can probably put this up to 20 if you have a fast internet connection, but just keep in mind the more you have going on at once, uh, the slower the proxies are going to respond. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'd recommend 5, but if, uh, you want, if you have a big list of proxies and you want the checking to occur faster, you know, you can bump this up. Okay, so next is the max timeouts before discarding setting. Um, basically, when you use proxies, uh, sometimes you'll uh, request a, a website and the request will timeout. And this, this happens, you know, some proxies are not that reliable. Um, and it, it, it even happens with uh, your regular IP. You know, if you have too much going on, sometimes your request will just start the timeout. So uh, what this setting does is it configures how many timeouts we're going to allow the proxy to have before we discard it, which is basically setting is active to false. Um, so five's a good setting there. Uh, if, it, if you get more than five timeouts with a proxy, it's generally uh, pretty unreliable. So um, that's what that setting is. Um, next is the max active latency. Uh, this is uh, 500 is a good default for that. Um, basically what that is is the max latency to automatically uh, check the proxy as is active whenever we go to check the proxies. So you see here that um, any proxy that had a latency under 500 milliseconds was automatically set to is active uh, for use with data gathering. So um, you can increase that setting or decrease it uh, however you like. Um, that just configures whether or not we're going to automatically set it as active when we go to check the proxies. Next is the HTTP connect timeout setting. Um, this is uh, how long we're going to wait for a request before we consider the request times out. Um, and that uh, goes hand in hand with the max timeout. So if I say I get Google's homepage and uh, we're sitting there for more than five seconds, we're just going to say that that timed out and we're going to increment the proxy's uh, current timeout. So um, that's what that setting is. And the last setting is uh, what to do whenever you get a CAPTCHA from Manta. Um, so when encountering Manta CAPTCHAs, you have the option to either solve the CAPTCHA or switch to the next available proxy. Um, if you choose to switch, it's just going to discard uh, the, the current proxy and move to the next one. That way you don't really have to solve any CAPTCHAs. Um, and if you choose to attempt to solve CAPTCHA, it'll actually show you the CAPTCHA and allow you to type it in. Um, if you do solve the CAPTCHA, it's going to keep your proxies alive longer. Uh, they won't get banned as quick. Um, but it's purely up to you whether or not you want to uh, solve the CAPTCHAs or uh, switch to the next proxy. Uh, I just like to switch because, you know, I can get enough proxies where I don't need to be bothered by CAPTCHAs. So that's it for the proxy settings. Um, a couple other things you can do with the proxy manager. In the upper right corner of the grid view, you'll see an actions button. Um, you can clear all the proxies, and this will delete all your current proxies at once. Uh, you can copy the active proxies to the clipboard. Uh, you can copy all the proxies to the clipboard. Uh, you can export the proxies to a text file. 
And um, if you do start to sort the grid view and you lose that default sort order where it's by uh, is active and latency, um, there's an actions uh, menu item to restore the default sort order. So that'll sort it by is active and then by latency. Um, so that's what that does. Um, next, uh, you can uh, select these proxies. Uh, you can click and drag to select multiple proxies. You can right click to uh, copy those to the clipboard. Uh, you can delete those. So uh, if I want to delete all these proxies down here that you know didn't respond, you can right click and hit delete. Um, you can also delete a proxy by clicking the X next to each proxy and that'll go ahead and delete that proxy as well. So that's pretty much how you use the proxy manager. Um, you basically paste your proxies in, you uh, click add to proxy list, uh, you go ahead and you check them, and you make sure that the ones you want to use for data gathering are set uh, to is active. Uh, make sure that you do not set any of these uh, is active if they require authentication or if they were redirected. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set these two as is active because they're just slightly over the 500 millisecond threshold. So those are probably good proxies as well. Um, so once you're done here, you just simply click done, and then we're going to head over to the Find Local Client section so we can uh, gather the data. Okay, so next I'm going to enter my uh, keywords and locations. So I'm going to go ahead and enter Restaurants Pittsburgh. I'm going to make sure that I have the Gather Business Owner Name uh, option checked. And I'm also going to go back to the Settings tab and uh, choose to gather the top 100 results. And uh, one other setting I didn't explain is the Manta Delay setting. Uh, basically, this is how long the software will wait between uh, requests to Manta.com. Um, the longer you wait, the, uh, the longer your proxies are going to stay alive and uh, won't get banned. Um, so I have it set to 3,000, which seems to be a pretty good number. Um, if you don't have a lot of proxies and you want to keep them alive longer, uh, you can set this you know, four or 5,000 or up to 10,000, which is uh, 10 seconds. But um, 3,000 seems to be a good number. You seem to get a decent bit of results before you get banned. Um, so we're going to go back to the Find Local Clients, and we're going to go ahead and choose to gather this data. Um, so in terms of the uh, proxy debug, so this is what I was talking about, is this window here. Um, that setting in the proxy manager that said to uh, show the proxy debug window, uh, this is the window. So on the left of the window, you're going to see your current usable proxies. So these are the ones that we can use. Um, to the right, you'll see unusable, which uh, what happens when the proxy gets uh, banned is it'll be uh, declared unusable and it'll appear in this list. And it'll also have a, a timeout associated with it. So it'll tell you um, when it can be used again, which is typically about a half, a half hour or so after it gets banned. Um, and then down here in the proxy debug output uh, box, you're going to actually see a detailed uh, data gathering uh, once we get to the business owner data. So right now it's getting the uh, places page data. But here you'll see exactly what's going on, uh, whether it found data, whether it didn't find data, um, if a proxy got banned. Um, so uh, we'll let this gather the data and I'll, uh, I'll be back as soon as it's uh, ready for the business owner data. Okay, so it started to gather the uh, business owner uh, data. Um, so in the debug output down here, you can see uh, some entries. It says, uh, you know, business owner data has been found for uh, the result name. Um, you also see, uh, you know, no business owner data could be found for a result. And, uh, you know, not all results are going to have business owner data that uh, Places Scout will be able to find. Um, so it's just telling you that it wasn't able to find it. Um, as long as you continue to see data being outputted here, um, everything's uh, good. Uh, if you start to see a lot of no business owner data could be found in a row you just see that non-stop then there might be some issues with the proxies uh, something might have happened um, I think I've worked out all the bugs so it uh, shouldn't really happen anymore but um, if that does happen you can always just uh, go over here and abort the operation and uh, start over uh, when you do that it'll pick up where it left off so it won't try to get data that it's um, already gotten uh, so you can see here it's getting all the data and uh, as the proxies get banned they'll uh, They'll appear in the unusable proxies list. You'll see a uh, entry in the debug output that says this uh, proxy was banned. Um, so we'll we'll wait a little bit and see if uh, we can find one that gets banned here. And um, just so you can see that. And actually, uh, we're just about done here. It's still uh, still using the same proxy that we started with. We almost got a hundred results. So. Um, so that Manta delay setting of 3000 seems to be a good one. You can see here I've almost gotten 100 results and uh, still using the same proxy. So, um, you know, you can try 3000 for the Manta delay. It uh, appears to be working fairly well. We haven't even uh, gotten banned yet here. Um, so we're just about done, and I will explain the data. And I'll also bring this back up just to show you what happens when you get banned real quick. Okay, so we have all the data now. 
Um, so you can see the uh, the contact names. All your uh, business owner name data is here for all the results uh, that we could find it for. Um, the whole way to the bottom. Um, there's a couple things you'll see. Uh, sometimes you'll see N slash A and it will uh, have a hyperlink be underlined. Um, what this means is that we found a MANA listing for the business, but there was no uh, business owner name on that listing, so uh, we just hyperlink you to it. Um, if you see an N slash A and it's not hyperlinked, um, that means we could not find any uh, MANTA page for that business. Um, so that's uh, what the data looks like. I'm going to go ahead and um, we'll change the city here to Cleveland, and I'm going to run this again until it gets banned so I can show you guys. Uh, so we'll be back as soon as the uh, ban sets in. Okay, so we finally got uh, one of the proxies banned, um, and what happens is it gets added to this list over here to the right under um, unusable proxies. Uh, you can see in the debug output it says proxy declared unusable, Manta banned. Um, so it tells you that it's going to switch to the next one, and uh, the current proxy label down here tells you the uh, next proxy that's being used. So um, that proxy actually was pretty successful. I mean, it actually got uh, 120 results before it got banned. Um, I've seen them get banned anywhere between 10 and 50. Uh, that one was actually really uh, good. So, um, so you can see what the settings that I went over in the video. Um, try the Manta delay at 3,000. Um, you know, make sure you have enough proxies to uh, get the data you're trying to gather, and uh, you can kind of just see how this all works. Um, so, I'm going to let this finish up here and uh, show you a couple other things, and I'm going to wrap this video up. Okay, so I actually canceled the data gathering after about 50 results because I wanted to show you how you can um, basically cancel uh, data gathering. Uh, you'll see here it got about 50 results and the rest of the contact names are NA uh, just because I canceled it. Um, now if you click find local clients again, it is going to pick up where it left off. So it'll start with this result and uh, continue from there. Um, and lastly, um, one other thing you can do is you can actually click on each of these results and it'll bring up that result in uh, your browser. So um, if you want to verify that the data the software got was accurate, you can uh, just simply click on it and view the uh, MANA profile and see the uh, contact names. Um, so that's pretty much it for this video. Um, you see how to use the proxies. Uh, make sure you set the proper ones active. Um, you see how they're used with data gathering. You saw the uh, proxy debug window. Um, so that should do it. Uh, if you guys run into any problems, uh, feel free to shoot me an email at uh, support at placescout.com and I'll see uh, if I can fix any issues. But um, everything seems to be working great now. So uh, the last thing is, you know, if you are going to gather thousands of results, just make sure that you have, you know, enough proxies. I would say you know, um, typically one proxy per every 50 results is a good number to, uh, to choose. Um, so if you want a thousand results, you know, make sure you have enough uh, active proxies before you go and gather that data. All right, everyone have a great day, and we will see you at the next video. Bye now.